This is the story of Borderlands in three minutes. Let's begin. The Iridians, an alien race on the planets Promethea and Pandora, spread throughout the galaxy, inventing incredibly advanced technology. Believing their technology too advanced for other primitive species and not wishing to fall into imperialism, the Iridians lock away their weapons and innovations in vaults. A monstrosity from another dimension called the Destroyer opens rifts in time and space and attacks the Iridians. In an attempt to stop it, the Iridians create the creature known as the Warrior. The Destroyer obliterates almost all of the Iridians, but they manage to lock it away in a vault on Pandora. Not needing the Warrior, they seal it in a separate vault. As centuries pass, the Iridians die out. Thousands of years later, a mega corporation known as Atlas discover the vaults on the planet of Promethea and ignites a futuristic gold rush. Atlas creates settlements on Promethea in order to capitalize on the Iridians' technology. They turn to the nearby planet of Pandora and search for vaults there as well. After settling, the Pandoran wildlife drives Atlas away and the Doll Corporation takes its place. Dahl uses prisoners and criminals to jumpstart the settlements, and they begin searching for a specific vault which is rumored to hold legendary Iridian treasures. Atlas learns of the Dahl Corporation's discovery, and the two begin a deadly competition to find the vaults first. Fearing a civil war, many privileged citizens of Pandora leave, and the criminals take over, overrunning settlements and setting up bandit camps. Atlas hires a vault hunter to unlock it, but everyone discovers the vault is home to the Destroyer. They kill the Destroyer, and a powerful mineral called Iridium suddenly appears on Pandora. Hyperion Corporation CEO Handsome Jack plots to use the Iridium for personal gain and learns of the second major Iridian vault on the planet. He discovers it is home to the Warrior and schemes to use the monster for his own devices. Over time, he becomes the self-made ruler of Pandora, but still seeks more power. Vault hunters continue to land on the planet in the hopes of discovering the treasure, but Jack refuses to tell anyone what lies inside. The vault hunters discover Jack's plot and set out to defeat him and recover the vault keys for themselves. They kill Jack's daughter and infiltrate Hyperion to learn the location of the second vault. They set off for it, but Jack intercepts them. Jack opens the vault door and releases the warrior. The vault hunters fight the warrior and kill Jack. They destroy the vault keys in an attempt to seal the vault for good. Just as they give up their search as a failure, they accidentally uncover a map of all the other Iridian vaults all over the galaxy. Believing that these vaults might store new treasures, the vault hunters pledge to track them down and reap the benefits. The Borderlands series forces players to face the harsh frontier planet Pandora in search of a mysterious alien vault legend. Described as a first-person role-playing shooter, this game also features a groundbreaking content generation system that creates a near-endless variety of weapons and items to customize your character. Borderlands has a deep, rich fiction and bold art style that creates a breathtaking experience that challenges the conventions of modern shooters. Gamers across the world would be remiss if they passed up an opportunity to play this game. That being said, here's seven things that you probably didn't know about the Borderlands series. If you learned at least one thing from this video, or just liked the video, please leave a thumbs up. One of the major draws to this game is its distinctive art style. This game utilizes a process known as cell shading, the process of making 3D animations look cartoonish with minimal gradients and bold outlines. The first video game to use this art style is Dr. Hauser for the 3DO in 1994. Cell shading was then made popular in games like Jet Set Radio and Beautiful Joe back in the early 2000s. But did you know that the original trailer for Borderlands didn't have this distinctive art style? It actually had a much more realistic feel to it. Here we see a tech demo of the actual gameplay. Initially, the game was panned by critics for being bland and underwhelming. Combined with the fact that the game developers felt that the market was too saturated with realistic shooters, they ultimately decided to use cell shaded graphics instead. And boy oh boy, did they make the right this holy nutballs, what happened to your freaking face? 
one of the designers for Borderlands 2 got real lazy and stole pieces of artwork to use in their manual. The artist they stole from is Ali Moss. He's best known for creating impressively designed artistic tributes to some of the most renowned video games and cinematic classics. The unnamed employee at Gearbox not only plagiarized his signature art style, they actually made an exact copy of some parts of it. In a series of tweets, Moss reacted to an image inside the Borderlands 2 manual, which replicated his work on posters done for the Star Wars movies. If you take a closer look at the zigzag clouds in the background, you'll see that it's a direct copy of Moss's Empire Strikes Back poster. Ali didn't want to make a big deal out of it. He just wanted the company to know that he was bummed out about not being given the chance to design the artwork himself. In the end, it seemed that everything worked out A-OK, -okay, as Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford messaged Ali to check his email and to also express his love for him. He went on to say that the person responsible for the art theft faced consequences. The foul-mouthed but lovable Mr. Torque is a non-playable character in the second downloadable content for Borderlands 2, The Campaign of Carnage. He's a 43-year-old founder of the weapons manufacturer, Torque. But did you know that the reason that he's bleeped is because of a device in his voice box? In his own words, he says, A lot of people been asking why my voice beeps all the f***ing time. The Torque shareholders wired my voice box with digital sensor, so I can't say stuff like, your f***ing balls. That's like half my f***ing vocabulary! It's goddamn bullshit! By the way, it was also revealed in a Gearbox interview that Mr. Torque is actually bisexual. Easter eggs, Easter eggs, this game has a crap load of Easter eggs. Honestly, too many to keep up with. As a matter of fact, Brady Games, the company responsible for making the strategy guide for Borderlands 2, says that it was the biggest guide they had ever made for a game, as they tried to include some of the game's references to pop culture, movies, and even other games. Here are some of the more interesting references in the Borderlands series. In Sanctuary, a non-playable character might say, I used to be a vault hunter, like you. I took a bullet to the knee. <laughs> Apparently, Gearbox employees like internet memes dealing with Skyrim. We discussed the backstory of this topic in an earlier video on this channel. The Siren has access to a blue and yellow skin aptly named Vault Dweller, which is an obvious nod to the outfits worn by Vault Dwellers of the Fallout series. In Borderlands the pre-sequel, if you go to the top of the Darksiders Tower, you can find a man named Neil Parsec. This guy looks like a life-size Buzz Lightyear from the Toy Story films. The purple, white, and green wing-tipped nut jumps from a platform and tries to fly, just like Buzz did in the movie. In a previous video, I explained to you the significance of the Konami code in games. Entering this code will give you boundless fortune, extra men, or even a turkey surprise. But if you enter the Konami code into Borderlands 2, you will get extra wubs. But unfortunately, it has no real significance, as far as gameplay is concerned, and it does absolutely nothing. If you go to the Moxie Club, make sure you check out the DJ booth. DJ Boom and DJ Rang look remarkably like my favorite EDM group of all time, the beat banging robots of Daft Punk. A QR code, or quick response code, is a machine readable optical label that can contain coded information, kind of like a UPC code but with greater readability and larger data storage. Borderlands 1 and 2 have secret QR codes scattered throughout the game, so just flash your smartphone's QR reader on the screen and unlock some interesting tidbits. One code in the first game decodes to CL4PTP was here. Claptrap was here. In Borderlands 2, one code reads, Thank you so much for playing our game. Now I'm rich with love and money. Nick Wilson, ditto. If you go to Moxie's, you'll decode this message. Wise men say, forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for late pizza. Captain Picard. Of course, we all know that Captain Picard never said this. It was actually a direct quote from Michelangelo in the first and best Ninja Turtles movie. Wise man say, forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for late pizza. I gotta get a new route. Handsome Jack is the main antagonist of Borderlands 2. This egotistical megalomaniac declared himself dictator of Pandora, took credit for finding the vault, and even claimed responsibility for killing the Destroyer. Here's some behind-the-scenes facts about one of video games' worst villains. The game's lead scriptwriter, Anthony Birch, originally intended Handsome Jack to simply be a placeholder name. It was a reference to a Doctor Who companion, Captain Jack Harkness. However, the name proved popular among the production team, and they decided to keep it. One of Handsome Jack's most famous quotes is, These pretzels suck. Hey, how did, how did pretzels suck? How's your day been, buddy? 
We haven't really talked much since I left you for dad. This is what Anthony Birch had to say about the subject. These Pretzels Suck was an ad lib by Damian Clark, the voice of Handsome Jack. It is easily Jack's most popular line, and I didn't freaking write it. I will never forgive Damian for this. Seriously, Damian, I hate you. Handsome Jack's flamboyant and slightly douchey attitude is based on something pretty peculiar. Burt stated that the personality of Handsome Jack was partially inspired by an interview with Nathan Fillion on Jimmy Kimmel Live. He said, Fillion acts charming and funny, but also slightly arrogant in a down-to-earth kind of way. The Guinness Book of World Records didn't even do their research and put a false Borderlands record in their 2014 Gamers Edition. Somebody over at Guinness looked at a guy's speedrun video on YouTube and decided to put it down in the book as the fastest time to beat Borderlands 2. What they didn't know was that the guy who posted the video used overleveled and augmented weapons that you wouldn't normally have access to in a regular campaign. Basically, the guy used unconventional methods to beat the game fast, and he was just doing it for funsies. But since they needed to put something in the book, Guinness just added his name, and now this dude is immortalized as a record holder. I mean, look at the tweet that they sent to him. They didn't even know anything about the guy, but they still added his name to the book. Pretty incompetent if you ask me. But honestly, it's not like Guinness takes the Gamer Edition serious anyway, and look at some of these frivolous, meaningless records. First downloadable stealth game based on a TV show? Most prolific fictional video Video game DJ? <laughs> Gamers edition? More like lamers edition. <laughs> Am I right?